what happens. There we go. All righty. Number 43, the machine. I went and saw it primarily because in the previews it looked funny and I was so excited about Mark Hamill being in the movie. It was a totally stupid concept. <laughs> Hated the movie. It was just annoying. Where's the tripod? I don't want to hold this for the next hour. Yeah. You're gonna video this whole thing? Yeah. My friend Matt Nelson wants to see it. <laughs> So, uh, the bomb signifies it was a bomb. <laughs> it wasn't a very good movie. <laughs> and I chose that picture because that's the kind of look I had on my face after going to see the movie. Next movie, Josh and I differed a little bit on. Oh no! Something here. Judgment Number forty-two, oh. Elemental. Oh. No, it was my second to last as well. Disney's next big bomb. <laughs> 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 so I think it lived down to the expectations, and uh, I didn't really care too much for it. It was. And uh, unlike you, I like Waterboy better than I did Fire Girls. Really? <laughs> okay, number 41, Super Mario Brothers. You can see no pictures. Oh! oh. <laughs> Dang, Dad, you are a PowerPoint presenter. This is good. That's what I thought of. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised that this is about the element. <laughs> a so, genuine shock. So that was kind of my frustration with the movie there. What was your frustration? Just that it bombed? <laughs> yeah, it just wasn't very good. Uh, this is Retribution. This was a movie I went and saw. Is that Liam Neeson? Yeah, Liam Neeson. And here's what I thought of this one. Another bomb. <laughs> Another bomb. <laughs> my it goodness. Just, you keep up with the bombs. It was, it was, uh... You've got three bombs so far. It had possibilities. And it was, it was better than the other bombs, but... Uh, <laughs> a smaller... Catastrophe. I, I just didn't like him being so incompetent. Whoa, just, that got low. Because, it was low for you, too. And remember, remember, I told you that I liked most of the movies I saw. Yeah. Even Retribution, I didn't, wasn't totally disappointed. I just didn't think it was as good as, you know, you got, you got used to his character and the way he did it in the... Uh, like the Taken series? Huh, in the Taken series, and it's like, He's getting older, and they're revealing that in the way they do his character. The blind, blind, and it mainly was because it just was not, it was long and not well edited. Hmm. That's why I didn't get a better ranking, but I like the movie. I'm, I just think they could have made it a little better. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Number 38 is coming. Polite Society. Polite Society gets a little bit of a kick over the blind mainly because it's got a little bit of acting and stuff but uh it was it's a movie about two sisters and the the younger sister doesn't like the boyfriend and the fiance of the older sister and uh and she's right she ends up being right in the end <laughs> uh that's the mother-in-law the future mother-in-law on the left and she's a real awful person Ooh. it's an Yikes. interesting movie all right, Plane. This is one I just went to see because I like action movies and I like the movie pretty well, but it's just, it's not one of those great, great it's movies. number 37. Okay, so I decided I wanted to see the John Wick movie, so I went and saw, I watched all the John Wick movies leading into it here, and it was just like, Dang, dude. I don't know what the body count is in these movies, but they're really stupid, but uh, it's nice to get away and just watch Action, I guess. So, hmm. uh, I'm surprised they made so many of them. Equalizer three. I hadn't seen any of these, and I like Denzel Washington, so I was really interested. And this is a pretty good movie. Um, and uh, but uh, off his name. 
Uh, I didn't mean to do that. That's what the picture did. But uh, yeah. hey, this is the best PowerPoint so far. Uh -huh. We can't do any criticisms. So, so there is a there is a fight scene, and he he's just really cool. And his character's really cool, and he gets the bad guys. So, and you know they try to portray him as a bad guy because they're trying to find out who murdered a bunch of other bad guys, which it was him. And and you know it's like warning justice against the bad guy. So. Spoiler alert. <laughs> okay, Giff. This is uh, this is the next movie. This is a movie about George Foreman, who was a boxer, I thought heavyweight he was a grill. champ. <clears throat> I thought he was a grill. No, he was actually a boxer and, and ended up selling grills. He became a grill. <laughs> he became a Christian. He became a grill. He became a Christian and, uh, and quit boxing to, to be a pastor. Well, the ministries that he was doing couldn't support themselves financially, so he went back into boxing and won another championship. So it's his movie. This is obviously not done with the quality of like Creed, which you're going to see later. But uh, I like the Spoiler. movie and the story a lot. The Marsh King's Daughter, I went and saw this recently, and I thought it was a pretty good suspense show. You said you thought I would really like this one, right? It was a good suspense movie. Mm -hmm. Um, there's that's her and that's her father in the background and, and she's basically got to defend her family from her crazy father mm -hmm. our next movie <clears throat> Shazada <laughs> this is one of my Indian flicks that I enjoy going to see and this is a Interesting movie. Um, I just want to give you the background. His father, his real father, is the rich father in the green robe. But the other father, the one in the brown, in the middle over here. <gasps> oh no, you just turned off the TV. No, I didn't. Somebody did. Someone turned off TV. Nobody touched it. Yes, someone Somebody did. had to have for it to turn off. It just turned off. There. Just turn it back on with your app. I don't even have the Roku app. <coughs> Why? Oh, I'll get it. Somebody had to have done it by accident. It's okay, though. We're good. What were you saying? So, <laughs> what happened was... Uh, they thought the baby was going to die. Alright? They thought the rich baby was going to die. And so they went to the poor guy and asked and traded babies, okay? They traded babies so the rich couple would have a baby. Well, the poor, the, the, the real baby died, came back to life. He didn't fully die. And uh, he kills the doctor to hide the fact that this is really his son. And it's just He's really mean to his, to the rich guy's son. It's always abusing him and calling him, doing terrible things to him and stuff. And in the long, in the long story, he eventually figures out who he is, that he really is the rich couple's son and goes in and uh, he does the right thing for the family, but never does admit that he's really their son. But he does get adopted into the family uh, because of the person that he is and the quality of person he is. It's a really interesting movie. I liked it. No, uh, don't know why it's not. Why is it not for? I don't know. You might need to exit out and start it back because it's on some presenter mode or something. It looks like. Okay, let me get out of there. Press escape. I tried that, huh? Oh no. Okay. Uh, let me see. I'm gonna do from beginning. Let me just get this called up here. I did not follow any of that plot. Sorry. <laughs> it was right. too confusing for me. <laughs> 
without watching the movie. Right. And there's some of the dance scenes. I had to show some of those. <laughs> you love a dance scene. Okay, Flash comes in at number 31. It was a decent movie, but the main reason I liked it was because of the Batman. Batman was in it, Michael Keaton. <laughs> So it brought in the old Batman. And uh, they do the whole time travel thing and how when you mess with time, you screw things up. <laughs> Storyline. Puss in Boots comes in at number 30, The Last Wish. Okay. Oh. Teenage <laughs> yeah, nothing Mutant, to say about it. <laughs> Teenage Mutant Turtles. Yeah. Uh, nothing to say about the last movie. Mm -hmm. Sorry. That's okay. Well, not much to say about That's it. That's okay. You've got Teenage, a lot of movies. Teenage Mutant Turtles, Mutant Mayhem. Uh, I thought the movie was okay, and this goes back to nostalgia. I just like the original so much that I'm. it's hard for them to live up to it. Yeah. I'm surprised that this was so, above Puss in Boots for you, because of, you said you didn't like it. Yeah. This was a movie, Operation Fortune, Russe de Gaulle. I don't know if that's how you say it, but... This was an interesting, fun movie, so I liked it. The team goes in and gets bad guys, and uh, they got rid of that bad guy. Renfield, I really enjoyed this oh. movie. I really like this movie. Oh, too high. <laughs> I'm just gonna did you see it? I like, cover this left photo. <laughs> I did not see it, and I will not see so it. So he has to eat spiders and bugs to get his power, you know? Um, and Ick. Sounds like a nightmare to me. It's it's really an interesting movie and very gory, but I like the humor of it. So, Ant Man and Wasp: Quantum Mania. Is that electric? No, <laughs> Mr. Electric. <laughs> I like this movie. <clears throat> yeah, and I like this movie okay, but it's not my favorite of the Ant Man's. It was probably my least favorite. Mm -hmm. I think I may have seen that one too. The Marvels. Oops. Oh. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> I would. I just want to say that The Marvels was better than I anticipated. I had to throw the cats in there because they're a major pop, part of the plot line, you know. But uh, <laughs> are they? Yeah. Probably. There's, How do you? Did you see it? You haven't seen it. Well, I didn't see it, but I yeah. don't really have a huge desire to. But like, I know that Goose was a pretty big part of. The other one, so. Yeah. So, um, it was much better than I expected, and the kid, really, she elevated from the TV show. Her acting abilities and the way she captured that character, I thought. So she did good with some good direction, I guess. I don't know if they just get more rushed in the TV shows, because they got so many, you mm -hmm. know, episodes to put together or what. But her quality of acting was better, and I think that showed in that, what we were watching the other day, just the quality of acting was awful. Yeah, in a TV show. But, like, that kid acted in other yeah. things really good. Yeah, and yeah. so uh, I think sometimes maybe they're just so thin out that they can't afford good directors for some of these shows that they're doing on their... I see what you mean now. Uh, the Barbie <laughs> movie, I really liked it. I was pleasantly surprised. I'm surprised and, you really liked it. And I, I wanted to see it. I thought I really liked this actress... Roby, is that her Margot name? Robbie. Margot Robbie. I like her. I really liked her in... Suicide Squad? Uh huh? Suicide Squad? Yeah, Suicide Squad. <laughs> she really stole the show in that one. But uh, I was really impressed with him. I didn't care too much for him. Don't know that I'd ever really seen him in anything before, but mm -hmm. he did a great job, I thought. And this is where I put Sound of Freedom. Um... Just a powerful movie, and it is that emotionally powerful movie. Uh, speaking about an important thing, you know, child trafficking is really a sad thing. This is where I put A Man Called Otto. I thought it was a very good movie, too. But uh, um, he's one of the best actors I think we've ever been, ha that we've ever had. Yeah. And he could take a movie like Otto and make it good, you know? Yeah. And uh, this is a depressing movie. I, when you said my stage of life, I was like, 
I was confused by your statement on that. Because I don't want to give away anything in the storyline in case the kids ever see it. But uh, it is a good movie. And uh, his acting is great. Yeah. This was a movie called The Covenant. I really like this story. The individual in the middle frame there is the interpreter for them. He's also the one on the left. And I don't know if you can tell, he's got this guy here has been shot and he's trying to get him to safety. So in that cart, you can sort of see his head there. Can you see him? And so this guy, the, the interpreter, and I think this is in, based in Iran or Iraq, he saves this guy. And they promised these interpreters, hey, we're going to get you and your family's asylum mm -hmm. because of your helping us in, these, in this war. And uh, they weren't doing anything. They weren't moving on it. And this guy is now being chased down by the Tal Taliban, I think it is, in this particular movie. And he decides to go back in on his own after he recovers from his injuries and rescue his friend and get him and his family out of there because he made a covenant with them. And so I kind of like that allegiance to one another uh, that, that was there. Number 20 is X. It's called X, it's not called Fast X, I don't think that is it. And uh, anyway, it's just a stupid, it's, it's <laughs> you go to these movies not because they're, they make sense, because they don't. They're totally <laughs> ludicrous, stupid, crazy movies. And you just go to have fun. And, and still made it to your top 20. <laughs> and and you have fun. You have fun mm -hmm. watching the movie because it's just... So ridiculous. So yeah. ridiculous. Uh, and he... The villain is awful. Jason. He's so good in it. Uh, He's just such a mean person. Number yeah, he just does a great job. <laughs> and he... Outsmarts them. I mean, I kind of like the fact they finally got outsmarted in one. Oh, they did. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. He's outsmarting them every every turn. Every he he knows what they're going to do every time. And uh, this is a little movie called Asteroid City. I really like this movie. Is that Scarlett Johansson? Yes, yeah, Scarlett Johansson is in it. Uh, Tom Hanks is actually in it. Um, is that the top left? Yeah. Huh. Is he the top left guy? Yeah. He's the, he's the stepfather, but or the father-in-law. Uh, his daughter had died, and and so the dad and has the three kids and stuff. But it's just a zany movie with weird humor, and I thought it was funny. And had fun watching it. Uh, this was one where I think there were more people in it than I anticipated. There were about eight of us that showed up in this one. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> so there were several of us that were in for a interesting good time. Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. I liked it. I, I was, I liked. I thought they did, especially that opening scene was so Indiana Jonesy. Yeah. I loved the opening scene so much, mm -hmm. and uh, and thought it was really good. And I think it was a little bit of a letdown, the zaniness of him wanting to stay back in time. Mm -hmm. But uh, at least he didn't. So. <laughs> He got punched in the face. Here's Waitress the Musical. I really enjoyed this movie. And I thought these two stole the show. Mm -hmm. Very fair. They're both so awesome in the movie. Yeah. Or in the play. Uh, his character. I mean, you just think they're going to be nerdy people. But they're so much fun. And uh, they have a genuine love for one another and, mm. and stuff. So I uh, really liked them. Uh, here's Haunted Mansion. I like this movie. I thought it was done, a well done movie and I thought the actors did good. Uh, I just like the humor and the. Here's where I put Je Jesus Revolution. I oh, thought Jesus. it was a, a good movie and I had to put this scene in it. This is my favorite part of the whole movie. Uh, when they're sitting in the when they're, when house, he, house? he's he's had it, he's ready to be done with it, mm -hmm. and he says, "Man, come in, you got to hear this." Yeah, and they start singing, mm -hmm. and to see him go from that grouchy to just being filled with the spirit and so happy, I thought, how beautiful! It was a beautiful scene, and uh, it's 
It's one of the best scenes I've ever seen in a movie, I thought. I thought Kelsey Grammer did a great job. And it only made it to 15. <laughs> well, it's overall for a movie. Yeah. This movie was really underrated. Oh my goodness. I really like this movie a lot. I wanted to see that one. And, uh... <coughs> so it's a good movie. It's about, uh... Father trying to get his daughter back. Uh, this character over here, I can't, I can't remember who. Chris Pine. Huh? Chris Pine is the main character. He's the dad trying to get his daughter back. But uh, the the guy on his father's right, I can't remember his name right now. Hugh Grant. Hugh Grant's in this, and uh, man, he just uh, has totally turned his daughter away against him, and uh, that tension of him trying to win his daughter back and finally doing it was a good movie. It was it made for a good movie. Good action. I liked it. Here's another one of my here's my highest ranked <laughs> Indian movie. Kisi Kisi Ka Bai. Kisi Kisi Kija. And uh, this is a movie about uh, this guy is uh, a really strong guy and keeps peace in his neighborhood and then they got the bad guys come in and try to take the peace away and he falls in love with this girl and she thinks her dad is or her dad or her uncle or whatever is very peace and and his her dad was a fighter at one time and it's just bad versus evil so uh it's a good movie good versus evil good versus Good, yeah. Bad versus bad, bad versus good bad versus, versus, versus evil. <laughs> anyway, it was bad a, versus evil. <laughs> but uh, the reason I love the reason I had this rank so high was I saw this movie with a bunch of Indian people. So I so was in a theater. The I had tw a family of twenty Indians, you know, from India, come in and sit down in the movie theater around me, and I was so thrilled because I realized something. I'm watching the movies and enjoying the same things they enjoy. Mm -hmm. I was always afraid I was laughing inappropriately to get scenes and stuff because mm -hmm. I would laugh at things. Mm -hmm. And they're just laughing and having so much fun at their movie. And I'm like, I do get these movies because that's what they want. And it was a great cultural experience for me. I loved it. I'm yeah. sitting there with all these kids because the kids are there. They're laughing and giggling. They're walking and the parents are laughing and stuff. I had so much fun at this movie. I can't tell you how much fun I had at this movie. So that's why it got ranked so high. Cool. <laughs> Those kids were so funny, man. <laughs> oh, gosh. And then at the end, they did a little thing in the credits, and it was fun. Here's where I put Blue Beetle. And uh, it's probably my favorite DC movie that's been out in a while. Oh, I shouldn't say that because Shazam's higher. <laughs> but uh, this was it's definitely better. better than Wonder Woman 89 and better than some of the other ones. So I was really pleasantly surprised by it. I had to put her in it because she is really a mean person. She is. She is very mean. So I had to put <laughs> her in the pictures. This guy, poor, this poor guy is a victim of her. And, mm -hmm. and I felt sorry for him. And uh, yeah, it's a, it's a good movie. I thought it was one of the better superhero movies that's been out in the last few years. Spider-Verse, number 11. Don't take this personally. It's just I've got... Well, I'm taking it personally. I've just got some really good movies that are, I think, <laughs> movies that no, I okay. enjoyed. Yeah, I understand. Movies that I enjoyed more. I, <laughs> I thought, understand. I, I agree with you about the animation. There were a lot of things about this movie I liked. Uh, I thought it dragged a little bit before he got into the Spider-Verse. Um, you know, with... I did the tension between him and his parents. I didn't get into it very much, mm -hmm. and so once it got past, it. <laughs> once it got past that, what first forty-five minutes? I th felt like that was forty-five minutes of the movie, um, where he finally goes and j chases her, you know, into the mm -hmm. Spider Verse. Mm -hmm. I like the last part, and I really like some of the th ideas that they had in there, yeah. mm -hmm. and it's fun trying to figure out who the real bad person is because I know. We've all got different theories about who the real bad person might be. Mm -hmm. um, I love Shazam, Fury of the Gods. Uh, I really liked it a lot. I, I really would have, I think they cut him off. His friend that's, the, that's got the, the crippled one, the crippled one yeah. 
I really love the dynamic between him and the girl. Yeah, I do too. I think that's one of the highlights of the movie that I didn't get the picture in there, so I'm sorry. That's okay. But uh, I really thought it was a good movie, and I think the Shazam movies are unfortunately not doing as well as they should because they aren't the characters that people read in the comics that much. Mm -hmm. But they're really good Turning movies. off again. What on earth? I wonder why. Maybe because it's like... Maybe it's sensing that there's nothing on there. Yeah. There's no movement. Maybe. I don't know. <sighs> the next movie... Bless you. Excuse me. <laughs> you might have to reset again. Is, is uh, Creed 3? I'd not seen any of the Creed movies and was pleasantly surprised. It was one of those I went and saw because I kind of wanted to see it and... Since I got to go for free, I went ahead and saw it. And acting was really good. The directing was really good. The tension between the two main characters was great. And uh, this guy, he's got some problems, I think. But, uh, man, he's a good actor. Um, what, Michael Jordan? No, the other one. He's been, he's the one that was in the Loki movies as God, you know. <laughs> He was oh. the bad guy in Ant Man. Oh, okay. He's the okay. Bank, same bad guy from Ant Man as okay. well. He's a very good actor, but mm -hmm. uh, he's gotten in trouble with some accusations, at least. And I don't know if they're tr true or not of, of uh, abuse. Guardians of the Galaxy, I got, got a little fancy with my little <laughs> coloring on the letters there you to, sure match, did. to match the Teletubbies up here. Uh -huh. I just thought that scene was so funny with the Teletubbies. But let me tell you. The story about Rocket is just really good. It makes this movie more than a super. It, it makes this movie more than a superhero movie, and uh, I think it's one of the better ones that they've done because of the emotional factor, like you mentioned. Mm -hmm. It's really good, and that's one mean bad dude. He's, sure is. he's one of the worst villains, I think. Because at least Thanos was motivated by really thinking he was doing what was good for everybody. Mm -hmm. He was motivated by what he thought was good intentions. This guy's just evil. He's just full of himself. He is so evil. All right. Little Mermaid, number seven. You I really, loved The Little Mermaid. I really like this movie a lot. And I had, to, I had to get a picture of the Kiss the Girl scene. Mm -hmm. Kiss the Girl. I love that scene, man. It's so awesome. And uh, so I thought it was a very good movie and uh, never could figure out why it was being bombasted so much by other people. This is maybe one of the most exciting experiences I've had in the movie theater in my life, aside from when we got to go see Endgame together. Infinity War. I'm in Infinity War together. But this... I was in the... No, it was in game. In game. It was in game. Yeah. It was in Dolby Stereo, and I'm sitting right in the middle, and the cinematography is so good. You feel like you're in the race car, and you have that sound blaring, and it was just exhilarating to be in that. And and so uh, the the one guy from Stranger Things, great actor. David Arbor. Yeah, he just does a great job in it. And uh, I really enjoyed this movie. I thought it was a lot of fun. Hunger Games, That's the Battle great. of the Songbirds. I thought that might be nice. first, and I was like, <gasps> I, I really like this movie. It's one of those things that was disturbing. Was it disturbing? Is that what you said? Traumatic. It was traumatizing. traumatizing. It was traumatizing. <laughs> but, you know, I, I kind of like when you leave a movie and you're not like, but you're like, yeah. yeah. I kind of like that feeling leaving a movie sometimes. Yeah. The feeling and that, of emptiness and sorrow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's really a, I mean, it's really a great. Uh, that that means they accomplish what they're trying yeah, to accomplish, yeah. and to me, that's a tribute to the movie. Mm -hmm. uh, I volunteer as tribute, but I don't. Know. So. Yeah, like Sound of Freedom, you leave with that heavy feel. Yeah. Uh, I don't know how to convince y'all that these Avatar movies are good. But I believe you. I mean, I believe you too. I, I, I just, really desire. I am amazed at the special effects in them. I think the stories are good too. They're both on Disney Plus, right? Yeah. Yeah. I might try them out. The special effects are incredible, I guess. With this sound bar, it might really be good. Yeah. No, I haven't got... It wouldn't be as good as the movie theater, but, but I might uh, try them out. 
for but that. But I, I just, the story is about. The time you got going. It's really about prejudice and not being prejudiced. And how prejudice is a bad thing. And, and it, you know, it's a, they're very much uh, environmentalist wacko things, you know, what, what some people call environmentalist wacko things. But I think we should care for our earth more than a lot of people do. And uh, I, I mean, I, I, we are intentional about trying to exactly. recycle and stuff. And anyway, I thought it was a great movie. This movie here. Wow. I forgot about this movie. This is one of the. This is maybe. Barbenheimer. Did I smell it wrong? No. no. I think. She's saying it wrong. Oppen Oppenheim Oppenheimer. No, I was like mixing it up with Barbie because a lot of people like double feature. Yeah, Barbie yeah, that was a big oh, thing. Barbenheimer was a big thing. Yeah. But this movie, uh, yeah, cinema. It was a great storytelling, incredible acting. Downey Jr.'s in it. You don't even. I mean, a lot of people watched the movie probably didn't even realize it was Downey Jr. Mm -hmm. But man, he, all the acting is good. Is that Emily Blunt? It might be. And then the girl that plays Black Widow's sister is in it as well. She's she knocks it out of the park. The reason this may have gotten graded down a little bit was there were some sex scenes in it. <laughs> some surprise <It's> movie. Like, <laughs> I was like, whoa. Um, but uh, did not I did not go there expecting that. <laughs> I, I, I was thinking this. I saw you dropped a bomb on me. <laughs> <laughs> and then Mission Impossible Dead <laughs> Reckoning number Man. part one is number two. All right? Gosh. I'm excited to see what's number one. I don't know where it is. So yeah. I love me some Tom Cruise. I love me some action. I love hanging, hanging on a train and hoping you don't, awesome stuff hoping too. you don't, hoping you don't get killed by a grand piano about to lose its place and fall on you. I love fighting on top of trains. I it's love me airplane. some Mission Impossible. So, uh, really like this movie and can't wait to see the second one. And because I think the story is really good. It's about artificial intelligence mm -hmm. and how it can take over and they're trying to fight that so i'm really excited to see the conclusion and are you ready yes. i'm ready <gasps> number one is action movies for sure <laughs> <laughs> the family wow She says after she gets it revealed. I love this movie. I'm gonna need to take a look at it. Besides looking through The reason it's, I it's love this. It's a Spielberg this, movie, right? It's Spielberg. This is another one of those where cinematography was just really well done. Mm -hmm. um, it's It plays with your emotions. But it's neat to see this kid growing. And, and it is kind of, they don't say it's autobiographical. And he says it's the most autobiographical thing he's done. So watching his love for movies grow yeah. and realizing, man, he's one of the best that's ever done it. Yeah. Uh, it was fun watching him go through that process. I don't know how accurate it is in the relationship that his mom had with his dad and that kind of stuff. But that's a powerful emotional story, too. And uh, it's just really a well-done movie. And uh, I like it. I like it a lot. It's where he found meaning as a teenager when he was a Jewish boy going to California and being having prejudice things done against him and how he found strength in the middle of that. How he was able to make relationships because of his ability to make movies. Um, it was neat seeing how he did that. I really like this movie. So. It makes sense that the movie lover would put the <clears throat> love letter to movies number one. Yeah. So you know, had y'all forgotten about this movie? I, I had no I had, idea what was left. Yeah. Yeah. I forgot about it. Yeah. I knew that you told me to watch this movie. I, I was just but... enjoying it as I was watching you talk. <laughs> and I was I was anxious for Hunger Games. I was like, where's this going to end up? Is it going to be number one? That'd be crazy if it was number one. Because I was the one I knew. There were a lot of, I thought there were a lot of, it's nice to have movies back. 
Yeah. Yeah. Because we went through a couple of years where there wasn't much coming out. Yeah. Next year's not going to have much either because of the strikes. Yeah, the strikes are going to slow things yeah. down. You're right. But in the year after, it'll be fine. Good job. <laughs> Very fun.